again, going back to functional, HR were told there's a vacancy. So you go to your normal route, you get a load of CVs in and you pass them on to the line manager and it's, it's a process. Now we're seeing microsites being developed, long-term postings within social media on values and purpose, you know, employee, the voice of the employee themselves being used mm -hmm. as examples of why this is a great place to work. And also we see it the other way that it's about long-term, that people, you know, that acceptance that you don't have a job for life. So one thing that came out in last year's survey, and this is brand new because only 4% of top employers did this, uh, so really small percentage, but it was actively ringing up regretted losses after six months to see how they're finding, whether the grass is greener on the other side. Now, of course, the reality is if they are happy, they still then feel warm and fuzzy about that contact from their old company. And if they're not happy where they've gone to, you're opening that door to say, please come back. We like you, we respect you, we value you. We already know your values and beliefs match the organizational ones. And th there's no recruitment cost. So it, uh, th th it's a win-win in the sense that it gives you that option to pull somebody back. If you don't, you are still curating a kind of alumnus, alumni uh, network and I think that's part of the talent curation. It's both positioning the organization so that those who are considering careers, they will be, they, you won't even know, but they'll be on the microsites, they'll be on social media, they'll be forming a perception of your organization without even engaging with you. Mm. But you, so you need to do that right, because otherwise by the time you talk to them, they won't want to work for you. And then at the other end, it's keeping those that have left you part of the family. Uh, and, and so that way you move from this, here's the organization, and we only go outside it when there's a specific talent need, to we're looking at this, and we're trying to create touch points and engagement with that whole sphere uh, and creating a sphere of influence. And that's what we mean by talent curation. I'm constantly surprised at how long this has taken. We're all consumers, but the likes of Facebook and Amazon and Tesco's online shopping. All of these things that we see on a daily basis are so slick and easy and seamless, and they have to be because of that competitive nature. And yet within organizations, we have been clunky at adopting consumer-led practices. And th there's always been a good reason why not. It's, oh, because it's for security reasons or GDPR, or it doesn't integrate with our mainframe or our SAP. But these are the same arguments we had when People wanted to bring their own device and companies were saying no. So it, it took far too long for companies to accept that they could have security, data security, and still allow their own devices. Mm. I think we're now at that same tipping point with consumer-led approach that companies have accepted that everyone's a consumer. And then it comes back to this whole talent curation and bigger piece about people are judging you as an organization permanently, whether you know it or not. And mm. If you have employees moaning that things aren't working, even just amongst their friends, even if it's not bad enough to put on social media or on Glassdoor or anywhere else, even if they're just telling their friends that, oh, our system's really clunky and old fashioned, that permeates through and someone somewhere will have a negative impact uh, perception of your brand. Mm -hmm. So it is everything, this whole psychology comes back is if you want to engage people to be a consumer for you, or an employee for you, or a partner for you, or a supplier to you, they all need to see you acting positively in every possible way.